Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the canonical ensemble partition function for the quantum harmonic oscillator. This is the function that corresponds to molecular vibrations. Recall that to find the canonical ensemble partition function, we need a series of all the possible states of our system J. The energy for each of those states is this big red E sub J. This is done at a particular temperature T. So we have this quantity minus E sub J divided by KT, which we raise as a power of the base of natural logarithms E, and we sum over all those possible combinations. So this is again, just a recap of the definition of the canonical ensemble partition function. We have found from theory, the energies of the levels of the quantum harmonic oscillator. So this is the E sub N depends upon N and it's this quantity N plus a half times H nu where H is Planck's constant and nu is the frequency of the vibration. Even more than that, we know that the allowed values of N start at zero and then we continue with the increasing positive integers. The harmonic oscillator is non-degenerate, so each level has a distinct energy, and the lowest possible value of energy occurs when n is equal to zero, that is the ground state. If we substitute this expression for the energy into the formula for the canonical ensemble partition function, what we get is this somewhat complicated looking expression where we've changed the index from J to N for convenience. And we know that we start at the N equals zero case and we go up through all possible values of N. So here is the index N and we have the Planck's constant H, the vibrational frequency nu, K is Planck's constant, and T is the temperature of the oscillator. Um, we're going to neglect to write the N equals 0, 1, 2, 3, because that is taken up by the summation symbol. Next, we use the properties of exponentials to convert this complicated exponential into a product of two somewhat simpler exponentials. Notice also that for our one half here, we've rewritten it to make it slightly easier uh, putting the two into the denominator of the exponent. We notice that the second exponential has no terms that depend upon n, which is our summation index. Therefore, we would consider this particular expression as a constant and we can pull it through, put it in front of the summation sign in the same way that we can pull a constant through an integral sign. Once we do that, we get this particular expression, where now the e to the minus h nu over 2kt is in front of the summation sign. We have to keep this expression behind the summation sign because it includes the summation index n. Now, to help our derivation, we're going to concentrate on simplifying just the expression that's involved in the summation sign. So this suggests making the substitution for this new variable y, which is equal to h nu divided by kt. Once we do that, that gives us that this summation here of e to the minus n h nu over kt now becomes the summation of e to the minus n times y. We're going to need a second substitution to make things easier. And this substitution is to let x equal e to the minus y. Once we make that substitution, it converts this summation all the way down to the sum of x to the n for n equals zero to infinity. And this is quite useful because this is a power series that is known to converge when x is less than 
the absolute value of 1. And the absolute value of x is less than 1. So this is a power series that converges, and it converges to the sum 1 over 1 minus x. Now, if we go and back substitute into this 1 over 1 minus x, we get a closed expression for the summation of e to the minus n h nu over kt. So now, using the fact that x is equal to e to the minus y, and that y was equal to h nu over kt, we can replace this summation by the closed value of 1 over 1 minus x, using the fact of what our x and y were, so that we now get that the overall partition function is our leading coefficient. But now the sum has been replaced by a closed expression, 1 over 1 minus e to the minus h nu over kt. So we have as a result that the partition function for a vibration, the harmonic oscillator, which we'll call q sub five here, is equal to e to the minus h nu over 2 kt divided by 1 minus e to the minus h nu over kt. Which is the result that we were looking for. We have one last bit of business, and that is to make sure that one of the techniques that we use was completely legitimate. So an important part of our derivation was using the fact that the power series of x to the n from n equals 0 to infinity had, converges, and it converges to the value of 1 over 1 minus x. And I mentioned this is only true, we only have the disk convergence, when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So what we need to show now is that this assumption that we made, that x, the absolute value of x was less than 1, is actually going to be true in our situation. Our condition that the absolute value of x is less than 1 is equivalent to this inequality that x is between minus 1 and 1. If we substitute the actual expression that we use for x, into the inequality, we get that e to the minus h nu over kt is strictly less than 1 and strictly greater than minus 1. But right away, we know from the properties of exponentials that exponentials are non-negative and non-zero. So these are strictly positive. So we can simplify our inequality and simply ignore this condition, which is impossible in this case. So we reduce our problem to showing that e to the minus h nu over kt is strictly less than 1. We take the natural logarithm of each side, which reduces this expression simply to the exponent, which is minus h nu over kt, and we know that the natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So that gives us that minus h nu over kt is less than 0. To tidy this up, we can multiply each side by minus 1. So that turns the left side into h nu divided by kt. Zero times minus one is still zero. And then we know that when we multiply an inequality by a negative number, that we change the direction of the sign. So now this gives us that h nu divided by kt is greater than zero. Which is simply the same as saying that h nu over kt is a positive value. Well, we know that the frequencies, by definition, are non-zero, so definitely positive. We know by the third law of thermodynamics that we can't reach absolute zero, so the thermodynamic temperature is always strictly positive. By defi their definitions, Planck's constant and the Boltzmann constant are positive values. So if we have positive values all multiplied and divide by each other, the result is definitely positive, which is greater than zero which means that our initial assumption that the absolute value of x was less than 1 is legitimate. Therefore, our use of this power series expansion and its closed form for its convergence value is legitimate. I thank you very much for your attention. As always, have a good one.